I love the Nancy Drew games. I grew up with them and I could praise them for hours and hours on end. Unfortunately, that is not what I'll be doing today. A little while back, I posted a poll on the Nancy Drew subreddit asking what kind of video people would like to see the most, and it turns out that the Nancy Drew community is full of negative Nancys. <coughs> As it were. The worst character in every Nancy Drew game beat every other option by at least 50 votes. So, I guess negative Nancy it is. For this list, I'm only looking at on-screen characters meaning no phone contacts and no characters who only appear as a voice over an intercom or through a door. Sorry Sergeant Mac Ramsey haters, but you'll have to wait for another list. Be warned, there will be major spoilers ahead for almost every game, including culprit reveals. So if I get to a game you haven't played yet, just skip on by and go play that game and come back later. This is going to be a pretty long video, and I've already split the video into three parts to make it a bit more manageable, so without further ado, let's get started with Secrets Can Kill. Since I can't seem to get my hands on a good copy of the original Secrets Can Kill, I'm only going to consider the remastered version of the game for this list. The worst character in Secrets Can Kill Remastered also happens to be the only character they added from the original version of the game. You guessed it, Detective Beach. Detective Beach just doesn't feel like an organic part of the game now that I know the original storyline. For those of you who don't know, in the original game the big reveal at the end was that Daryl, Mr. Perfect Student Body President, was a drug runner for his partner Mitch Dillon. The amount of drug content in the original game really didn't match with what her interactive had done in their later games, and I completely understand why they changed the resolution. However, when they were rewriting the story, it didn't make a lot of sense for Daryl to be selling corporate secrets to their local HVAC dude. That's where Detective Beach comes in. They needed a character to fill the shoes of the corporate criminal mastermind, and he fit that perfectly. Unfortunately, that's the only thing he really fit, and in the finished product, he feels like little more than just a plot device to help the story make more sense. The worst character in Stay Tuned for Danger would be William Pappas, but since we never really get to see him and I'm not going to break my rules this early in the video, he gets a free pass on this one. Another runner-up for the position of the worst character in Stay Tuned for Danger would be Ralph the Security Guard because he is the only character in the game that isn't considered a suspect. He was fairly important as an obstacle when you're snooping at night though, and he helps Nancy capture the culprit at the end of the game, so he just slides by. A little completely unrelated fun fact, unless I'm wrong, I believe that Ralph is the only fully modeled character in a Nancy Drew game with a voice actor and a model that isn't considered a suspect. Everybody else in all the other games is a suspect. It really hurts me to say this, but I think that the worst character in Stay Tuned for Danger has to be Millie Strathorn. I absolutely love Millie. And I think she's hilarious, but when you take into account the fact that you can have a maximum of three conversations with her, she unfortunately comes off as a little unimportant. Also, unlike Ralph, the game actually considers sweet old Millie Strathorn a suspect. What? I'm sorry, her interactive, but all the evidence you gave us was just plain hilarious. I actually had a really hard time choosing the worst character in Message in a Haunted Mansion. None of the characters were necessarily annoying or useless, and they each had at least one or two things going for them. I eventually decided on Abby, since she's just extremely hard to understand. I've played this game at least 16 times, and I still don't understand why she wouldn't at least tell Rose that she was faking hauntings for publicity. I understand the motive for bringing attention to the bed and breakfast, but the execution is still so baffling. 
Not being able to accuse her of the hauntings also feels like a bit of a missed opportunity for some interesting dialogue. We could have considered her as the culprit for a good part of the game until we found out the true culprit. It hurts me that the culprit of Treasure in the Royal Tower had, at least in my opinion, the weakest motive of all of the characters in the game. Jacques wanted to save his family name, Dexter wanted desperately to find out what his adoptive father Ezra Wickford had left for him, Professor Hotchkiss was addicted to Marie Antoinette, and to be honest she was pretty nutty at times too, and Lisa? I don't know, Lisa belongs in the lap of luxury? As such, Lisa has to be the worst character in this game. Treasure in the Royal Tower is one of my favorite Nancy Drew games, and I've played it so much that I've just gotten a bit sick of Lisa. She's the least interesting character by far, and I really don't think she's actually smart enough to have planned her trip at the exact time that all three medallions would be in the castle, and that just seems like a huge coincidence to me. I don't know. Lisa's just a huge no for me. This is another really good classic Nancy Drew game with a lot of really good characters. The final scene is a very character heavy game, meaning that there's more character interaction than puzzles, and I think her interactive recognized this and truly went all out in the writing department. Like with Message in a Haunted Mansion, I just had to pick the character that was less well done than the others. Even though he's not an awful character, I had to choose Brady Armstrong. Brady Armstrong's biggest flaw is his changing character for the third day. It completely contrasts with how he acted in the first two. Instead of being helpful like before, he downright refuses to stop the demolition because it would hurt his reputation or something. The revelation that he was the theater's owner could have added a lot more depth to his character, but it ultimately just ended up hurting it. Alejandro Del Rio is the first of the characters on this list to suffer from what I like to call IDS, or Information Dump Syndrome. That sounds a lot goofier now that I say it out loud. <laughs> While he could be an interesting suspect at times, he mostly serves as the exposition fairy or as a plot device to help you solve a puzzle. For example, a specific part of the game, you have to learn a word in Nahuatl, a dead language that someone nearby, Alejandro Del Rio, just happens to know. There are a few Nancy Drew games that are full of characters like this, and while Secret of the Scarlet Hand is a very good game, it makes me sad that it started such a disappointing tradition. Uh-oh, we already have another case of IDS. I love Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake so much that I actually had it memorized the whole way through middle school. Forget watching a movie, I could plot myself down and get through this game in about an hour and a half. I played it enough that I can say with certainty that Ranger Acres is nowhere near as important as the game wants us to believe. You can ignore him for most of the game and all that you'll miss is a bit of expedition on Mickey Malone's gang and maybe a little bit about Red Knot and M. If it wasn't for a few interactions with Vivian Whitmore, you wouldn't have to even talk to him once. With the strong personalities of the other characters in the game, Ranger Akins just seems a bit too flat. I think that most people view Joy Trent as the worst character in The Haunted Carousel, but I just couldn't justify that choice since her backstory makes up the entire latter portion of the game. A character I can justify being the worst character, however, is Harlan Bishop. I understand that a lot of people like him, but something about this guy just really rubs me the wrong way. It could be the fact that he constantly lies about his past for next to no reason, or maybe the fact that he uses security cameras to spy on his co-workers. 
or quite possibly the fact that he refuses to talk to Nancy for almost half of the game because she, quote, backstabbed him by telling his employer something she already knew. This is also the first appearance of Jonah Von Spreken's voice acting in the series, and Harlan's voice bothers me because it seems so flat compared to the excellent performances we got from the same voice actor later in the series. It took me forever to decide on this one. Every character in Danger on Deception Island is interesting in their own right, and I enjoyed interacting with all of them. Once again, it came down to choosing the character that offered the least to the game, and in my opinion anyway, that has to be Jenna Deblin. While I find her interesting, I feel like she could have probably been removed from the game completely with only very minimal rewrites. Again, Jenna isn't a bad character, and I appreciate the free chowder, but it just wasn't enough. I'm sorry. People have such strong opinions on the characters in Secret of Shadow Ranch, so if you start feeling an increasing need to scream at me, just remember, this is subjective, and it's only my opinion. I would love to hear why you think I should have been in the exploding pump house down in the comments. Anyway, for Shadow Ranch, I had to choose Mary Yossi. You can take that with a grain of salt because my favorites change all the time in this game, but she just can't compete with the other characters in my mind. It doesn't help her case that she takes forever to get to, and I usually don't stop and see her unless I'm already out and about on Bob. Anyway, just my opinion, it was impossible for me to choose any of the others because they have great personalities and I love them all too much. Alright, here we go. Last game of the video and I'm pretty sure that everybody but my mom is in love with this game. Luckily, I think everyone will agree with me when I say that Ethel is the worst character in Curse of Blackmore Manor. She is so interesting, but at the same time, we all dread that moment that she jumps at us from around a corner or waits from us behind a door. Her strength is also her downfall in that. I appreciate the air of mystery around her, but I think that her unavailability pretty much removed her as a true suspect. After a while, she just begins to feel like filler since you only spend about 7 or 8 minutes with her in the entire game. It would have been gutsy of her interactive to make the culprit this random weird person we can never find, but everybody knew it wasn't going to be her by the second encounter. And that wraps up part 1 of the worst character in every Nancy Drew game. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and weren't too angered by my highly opinionated decisions. I'd love to hear your least favorites down below in the comments. As I think I mentioned before, I split this video into thirds to make it a bit more manageable for me, and I'm hoping to have part two out for you in about a week. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it, and it would honestly mean a whole lot to me if you'd like this video and even give me some suggestions for things you'd like to see down below. I'm completely new to this strange, crazy new YouTube thing, and all of your feedback helps. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.